it's, it, I think each administration has learned from the other and that this group is just the cleverest I've ever seen uh, and took it to new heights. The TV, radio, print, other media outlets are as crucial to going to war as the bombs and the bullets and the planes. They're part of the arsenal, the propaganda weaponry, if you will. And that's totally understood across the board at the Pentagon, the White House, the State Department. The proven menace like Saddam Hussein in possession of weapons of mass destruction. The Iraqi regime possesses biological and chemical weapons. We do have solid evidence of the presence in Iraq of Al-Qaeda members. The regime has long-standing and continuing ties to terrorist organizations. Just repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. Repeat Al-Qaeda Iraq, Al-Qaeda Iraq, Al-Qaeda Iraq. Just keep it going. Keep that drumbeat going. And it was effective because long after it was well established that there was no link between Al-Qaeda and the government of Iraq and the Saddam regime, the polls showed that an overwhelming majority of Americans believed that Al-Qaeda, that Iraq, was responsible for September 11th. Most people actually believed and accepted that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. I have to admit that until we really started burrowing into this story, uh, that I believed it too. I mean, are, is this something that they could go along And they found plenty of evidence to contradict the official propaganda, and the facts quickly changed his mind. I s simply spent basically a month familiarizing myself with what Saddam's weapons of mass destruction programs had been and what had happened to them. And there was tons of material available on that from the UN weapons inspectors. I mean, they got into virtually everything. And their reports were online. If you go down here, the Iraq Nuclear Verification Office, they put up regular, here you go, the key, key findings what they found out about Iraq's nuclear weapons program. It's all here in the open for anybody who wants to read it. International inspectors had gone into Iraq after the first Gulf War to search for and to destroy Saddam Hussein's weapon systems. Late in 1998, the inspections came to an abrupt halt after the Iraqi government refused to cooperate. But that hardly meant no one was watching. During the period of time between when the inspectors left Iraq, which was in 1998, at the end of 1998, and then the United States had covered the place with spy satellites and uh, U-2 overflights, and uh, you know the other intelligence services had their eyeballs on this place. There's a great danger that That's why Landay was surprised by what Vice President Cheney told a group of veterans in late August 2002. Many of us are convinced that Saddam Hussein will acquire nuclear weapons fairly soon. And I looked at that and I said, what is he talking about? Because to develop a nuclear weapon, you need specific infrastructure. And in particular, the way the Iraqis were trying to produce a nuclear weapon was through enrichment of uranium. Now, you need tens of thousands of machines called centrifuges to produce highly enriched uranium for a nuclear weapon. You've got to house those in a fairly big place, and you've got to provide a huge amount of power to this facility. Could he really have done it with all of these eyes on his country? But we now know that Saddam has resumed his efforts to acquire nuclear weapons. So when Cheney said that, I got on the phone to people, and one person said to me, somebody who watched proliferation as their job, so the vice president is lying. On the basis of his intelligence sources, Landay wrote there was little evidence to back up the vice president's claims. But the story Landay wrote didn't run in New York or Washington. Knight Ritter, remember, has no outlet in either city. So it couldn't compete with a blockbuster that appeared two days later on the front page of the nation's paper of record with a familiar byline. Quoting anonymous administration officials, the Times reported that Saddam Hussein had launched a worldwide hunt for materials to make an atomic bomb using specially designed aluminum tubes. 
And there, on Meet the Press that same morning, was Vice President Cheney. Tubes, there's a story in the New York Times this morning. Um, this is, uh, I don't, and I want to attribute to the Times, I don't want to talk about, obviously, uh, specific intelligence sources, but... Now, ordinarily, information uh, like the aluminum tubes would n wouldn't appear in it. It was top secret intelligence. And the vice president and the national security advisor would not be allowed to talk about this on the Sunday talk shows. But it appeared that morning in the New York Times, and therefore they were able to talk about it. It's now public that, in fact, um, he has been seeking to acquire, and we have been able to intercept and prevent him from acquiring through this particular channel, um, the kinds of tubes that are necessary to build a centrifuge. And the centrifuge is required to take low-grade uranium and, and enhance it into highly enriched uranium, which is what you have to have in order to build a bomb. Did you see that performance? I did. What did you think? I thought it's remarkable. Why? Remarkable. You leak a story and then you quote the story? I mean, that's a remarkable thing to do. And that's only part of it. Using the identical language of the anonymous sources quoted in the Times, top officials were now invoking the ultimate specter of nuclear war, the smoking gun as mushroom cloud. There will always be some uncertainty about uh, how quickly he can acquire a nuclear weapon, but we don't want the smoking gun to be a mushroom cloud. Those sorts of stories, when they appear on the front page of the so-called liberal New York Times, it absolutely comes with a stamp of approval. Uh, I mean, if the New York Times thinks Saddam is on the precipice of some of these mushroom clouds, then there is really no debate. We, we read in the New York Times today a story that says that uh, Saddam Hussein is closer to acquiring nuclear weapons. Does he have nuclear weapons? Is there a smoking gun here? The smoking gun is an interesting phrase. And as we saw in reporting just this morning, what specifically has he obtained that you believe would enhance his nuclear development program? Was it just a coincidence in your mind that Cheney came on your show and others went on the other Sunday shows the very morning that that story appeared? I don't know. The New York Times is a better judge of that than I am. No one tipped you that it was going to happen. No, no. The I mean, Cheney by office didn't make any, it didn't leak to you that there's going to be a big story? No. <laughs> No, I mean, I don't, I don't have a, this is, you know, on Meet the Press, people come on and there are no ground rules. We can ask any question we want. I did not know about the aluminum tube story until I read it in the New York Times. Critics point to September 8, 2002, and to your show in particular, as the classic case of how the press and the government became inseparable. Someone in the administration plants a dramatic story in the New York Times and then the vice president comes on your show and points to the New York Times. And it's a circular, self-confirming leak. I don't know how Judith Miller and Michael Gordon reported that story, who their sources were. It was a front-page story of the New York Times. When Secretary Rice and Vice President Cheney and others came out that Sunday morning on all the Sunday shows, they did exactly that. What my concern was is that there were concerns expressed by other government officials. And to this day, I wish my phone had rung or I had access to them. And you can Bob Simon didn't wait them. for the phone to ring. But when you said a moment ago when we started talking to people who knew about aluminum tube, 